Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Goldfield Recreation Area Environmental Assessment Public Scoping Meeting for February 23rd, 2023. My name is Chris Wonderly. I'm the Public Affairs Specialist for the Phoenix District Office, and I'll be facilitating tonight's meeting. Please note that this meeting is being recorded. To access automatic captions for the meeting, click the CC button on your screen. Just to note that these captions are not an official transcript of the meeting and may contain errors. Next slide, please. I'd like to start tonight by giving an overview of tonight's agenda. Uh, we'll start by reviewing our virtual meeting logistics, and then we'll introduce the BLM staff on the panel. We will then share a short presentation to give you some background on the project, the National Environmental Policy Act process, and the public comment period. And then we will have time for your questions. Next slide. For the meeting, uh, microphones and cameras will remain off. Uh, we will take questions tonight using the Q&A feature. You can submit questions throughout the presentation, but we won't answer questions live until the Q&A session after the presentation. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the BLM Arizona YouTube channel. The panel tonight will be available uh, in this team's live event to answer your questions until 7.30 p.m. Uh, we will do our best to answer as many of your questions as possible. Next slide, please. Now I'd like to turn, turn things over to our district manager, Leon Thomas, for our introduction. Good evening, everyone. Um, as Chris mentioned, I'm the district manager for the Phoenix District of the Bureau of Land Management. Um, I'm not going to start off by insulting your intelligence by going through everything on the slide there, but as you can see, um, we basically make up the middle third of the state of Arizona. We manage uh, mineral resources and uh, public lands from the Utah border all the way down to the international border with Mexico. We're at a very exciting juncture um, in this public process. Uh, a couple of years ago, I met with uh, members of your community out at the Elks Lodge and you all voiced some concerns about, you know, um, overstays of camping that we had out there and some other concerns such as, you know, the unsheltered population that was living in the area, uh, which you felt was causing some damage and also um, you thought felt that they were also responsible for some of the catastrophic wildfires that we saw in the East Valley. And so we took a multi-step approach to, you know, how we wanted to, you know, meet the needs of what you were trying to describe as challenges out there. And one of the things that we did first was we worked with our fuels team or we had our fuels team work with the state to do fuels breaks in the area. Um, so I, I know that some of you have seen some of the results of that out there. And uh, in fact, this weekend we'll be doing some pile burns of the slash um, to kind of finish up you know, that project. Now we're in the next phase of this, and uh, our team has worked very diligently to uh, put together a proposal as what we'd like to do to remedy some of the uh, issues that we were seeing out there on the public lands. Um, and I think you'll be very proud of the work that they put into this. As I mentioned just a second ago, it is a proposal. Uh, your comments and your input is very important to this process and verbal uh, questions are great. We'll answer your questions, but getting these comments in writing, as you'll hear later on, is the formal and legal way for us to be able to capture your thoughts and your feelings on this project. So without further ado, what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce the field manager for the Lower Sonoran Field Office, Tyler Lindsay. He um, has been with the Bureau of Land Management uh, for quite some time. In fact, he's a legacy. His father was also a field manager with the Bureau of Land Management. He's been in our district uh, coming up through the ranks. He started off as a lands and realty specialist. He was actually uh, the lead or the project manager for a creative and innovative solution to recreational target shooting, first in the Bureau of Land Management, where we have developed recreational target shooting sites on our district. Uh, he was the lead, like I said, for this. and. Um, 
He also served as an assistant field manager and acting field managers in our northern Hacienda field office. So you have a very revolutionary, creative, innovative leader in Tyler, and uh, I think you'll be um, really pleased with what him, he and his team have come up with so far. So without further ado, Tyler Lindsay, thank you. Hey, thank you, Leon. Um, what I want to do is, uh, as Leon mentioned, this is a public scoping meeting. Um, and, you know, the intent is to really, we want to hear from you all um, and help us on how we go through the analysis process. So anything that we're missing um, and help educate uh, the process to where we can make a, an educated decision. Um, so what I want to do is introduce some of the folks that are behind the scenes that will be helping answer some of the questions that are are going to come in uh, throughout the session. And um, myself and, and Katie Whitebull, my assistant field manager, will um, come back on later on um, after the presentation and um, and be able to respond to those questions. So again, I'm Tyler Lindsay. I'm the Lower Sonoran field manager. Um, my assistant field manager and Sonoran Desert National Monument Manager is Katie Whitebull. Uh, we also have BLM Project Manager and for the Goldfield area, uh, Chelsea McKinney. Um, our Planning and Environmental Coordinator for the Phoenix District is Dale Ohmice. Um, and as you already met, Chris Wonderly, our Public Affairs Specialist, um, the individual who's going is had a major role in this and is going to be leading you through um, the um, the plan and presentation is uh, Cindy Barrett, our project lead and outdoor recreation planner. Um, Amber Redger is our archaeologist um, for Lower Sonoran Field Office. Uh, Chris Bowman Perdot, he's the rangeland management specialist. Keenan Murray's the geologist, and actually Keenan's sitting at the He's helping us right now, but he, um, you know, he just congratulations to him. He just got a job as uh, one of the lead uh, geologists for the Arizona State Office. Uh, Dana Robinson, our GIS specialist. Uh, Kendra Lubert, she's our natural resource specialist and wildlife lead. And um, Herbine Lynn, she's the socioeconomic specialist. And then uh, Jan Banks, our lands and realty specialist. So we have a really good team here for you all today um, to help answer any questions you may have and um, help educate the process when you see it come up on the screen when Cindy shares it as far as how those comments will be submitted. Like Leon said, formally and legally, um, we're here to help and we're here until 730. So um, I'll, let's get into it and, uh, and get uh, Cindy coming on and, and present the project to you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cindy Barrett, and I am an outdoor recreation planner with the Bureau of Land Management's Lower Sonoran Field Office. The planning area includes approximately 1,098 acres and is located north of the town of Apache Junction on the east and west sides of State Route 88 around Hackamore and Nodak Roads. Next slide, please. The Bureau of Land Management's Lower Sonoran Field Offices manages isolated parcels of public land adjacent to the city of Apache Junction and is concerned about resource damage, illegal dumping, unauthorized camping, and uncontrolled fires that have occurred in the area. Next slide. What we have here is a couple examples of illegal dumping. Next slide. And in this slide, we have a couple examples of our camping overstay. Next slide, please. The city of Apache Junction would like to provide additional recreational amenities for its growing population. Popular activities include hiking, equestrian and off-highway vehicle or OHV use. And examples of OHVs would be ATVs, riding in your side-by-side -side like a Razor or a Can-Am, and dirt bikes. Next slide. 
The formal recognition and establishment of this project would contribute towards a more harmonious relationship with the public and the Bureau of Land Management. With the continued population growth anticipated in Apache Junction and the surrounding areas, increased use of outlying areas can be expected. The Lower Sonoran Field Office proposes creating a developed recreation area called the Goldfield Recreation Area, with additional rules in order to provide increased management of the parcels, reduce resource damage, and increase access to nearby trails. As a result of improvements at the site, the area would meet the definition of a developed recreation site or a developed recreation area. Rules associated with developed recreation sites and areas would apply in addition to any supplementary rules that the BLM may end up establishing. Next slide. Designating a recreation area would entail the long-term protection of public lands natural resources, resolve visitor health and safety concerns, and instill improved visitor behavior and ethics. In addition, it would also greatly expand recreation opportunities for a variety of users. The area receives regular use from local individuals, snowbirds, horseback riders, off-highway vehicle users, and there are two special recreation permit holders which hold activities within the designated area. With the increased urbanization of central Arizona, the need for structured outdoor recreation activities has increased dramatically. Designated trail areas and a dedicated staging area could ensure long-term resource protection and the preservation of existing recreation values by confining impacts to a specific area. Next slide, please. The Lower Sonoran Field Office is currently looking at creating a recreation area and applying the following items. We're looking to expand recreational opportunities for off-highway vehicle driving, horseback riding, and other recreational activities. We'd like to establish an OHV area, an equestrian staging area, and corresponding trails, do potential route designations so that all routes are numbered, and implement supplementary rules that will be created and applied based on the alternative that we end up selecting with your input. Next slide. Per the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA, the field office must look at a no action alternative. In the no action alternative, no actions would be implemented and the issues currently identified would continue, which basically means we would keep everything the way that it is and there would continue to be the danger of fires, the illegal dumping, the extended camping, um, and some conflict between different users. Next slide is alternative B. Alternative B would authorize the construction of an equestrian staging area in the southeast portion of the planning area. All current recreational uses such as off-highway vehicle use, special recreation permit use, equestrian, and camping would continue within designated areas that have uh, the designated area is going to be the equestrian staging area. And then we'll also end up having potential route designations in this area as well. Next slide. The proposed action would be alternative C. It's the most developed alternative the BLM is currently considering. And this alternative would create the horse staging area like alternative B. However, it would also construct fences to separate the most, uh, the most popular recreation uses. The most popular recreation uses at this time are OHV use and horseback riding within this area. You can see that we would expand recreational opportunities for equestrians, not only with the horse staging area, but there would be a designated equestrian area on the northern side and also on the western side of Hackamore Road. The OHV area would be designated near the southern side, and there would end up being designated camping sites available by reservation only along Hackamore Road. Next slide, please. Alternative D would authorize the creation of the equestrian staging area and allow for equestrian use only and establish, excuse me, establish a day use only area for the entire fenced in section. This would be our most conservative alternative. It would be for horses only, 
and would be day use only and would include signage, potential route designations, and the fence construction. Next slide, please. Now that you're aware of the project that the BLM will be analyzing, we'd like to review with you the timeline, explain where we are currently, and move into how you can help us move the project forward. The National Environmental Policy Act, as mentioned before, NEPA, is a process that all government agencies use when analyzing public land decisions and requires that we work with the public to make a range of suitable alternatives that we can analyze in that process. The left column titled Process Milestones provides you the key steps the BLM will be working towards as we aim to have a final decision in the late spring of this year. The right column is demonstrating key public input phases that we hope you will contribute to. As you can see with the arrow that says, we are here, we are currently at public spoking, scoping, which is the very beginning of our activities. Uh, your input is extremely important and you are our eyes and ears on the ground. And so we need more information from you in order to effectively make the decisions. The public scoping process officially started with the press release, which began the public scoping period on February 7th, 2023. The objective of the scoping process is to involve the public in identifying issues and formulating alternatives that must be considered by the BLM. The public scoping period will end March 10th of 2023, which means all comments need to be submitted by March 10th. Next slide, please. How can you help? We really appreciate hearing your thoughts. Your participation is an important part of the decision-making process because you know the area better than we do. The Bureau of Land Management is seeking issues and concerns related to recreation use in the Goldfield area. We need your help to identify issues to address in our analysis. The most effective comments are those that provide detailed information to the agencies. Here are some suggestions to make your comments useful in the NEPA process. Comments should focus on the proposed project in this particular area and what is being analyzed, such as identifying potentially affected resources and resource concerns that should be analyzed. Also data sources and other projects that the agency may not be aware of. The more clear, concise, and relevant to the project your comments are, the more effective and useful they will be. We'll describe in the next slide some tips for providing comments and information. When providing input during the scoping period, please remember to provide constructive solutions with documentation or resources to support your recommendations. Try to use road names, street names, subdivisions, addresses. Include any knowledge, experience, or evidence as it relates to your observations and comments. Provide GPS readings. These are incredibly helpful because it lets us plot exactly on the map the area that you are trying to get our attention to. Avoid vague statements or concerns because they don't give us anything in which we can act. Multiple comments or topics with the same concern are considered one comment. Form letters that you end up copying and having additional people sign are still only considered one single comment. Comments are not votes for or against any of the decisions. We must rely on supporting information and not the number of comments received which is why it's so important for you to write out what you mean and where you are providing the information for. Avoid using form letters to convey your opinion. It's your unique way of writing that the BLM can understand your point of view. Opinions do not add to the analysis and rather than stating, I don't like this or this sounds great, it's more useful for you to discuss specific details you have concerns about, such as, for safety reasons, I would like to have the horse staging area on the north side of Highway 88. Comments via telephone calls will not be considered. In order for this to be a valid scoping process, we need all comments in writing due to policies and legality. Make sure you submit your comments within the time frame announced. Again, all comments have to be received by March 10th. This last slide here provides two examples of a substantial comment and one example of an unsubstantial comment. The comments with the green check marks on the left hand side that read, you should build a staging area at this location and include GPS coordinates or street names. 
And the second green check mark, you should build a trail here using GPS coordinates for the beginning and end or going on something like Google Earth and dropping pins along the entire trail that you think should be established. Helps provide input from the user's perspective as well as locations for the BLM to research further in the environmental assessment process. The comment on the right with the red X that states, I agree or disagree with this plan, is an opinion and does not help the BLM with the project. Next slide, please. This slide goes over how to submit your official comments. Um, you can submit your official comments and requests for additional information or to be added to the mailing list by contacting us via email at blm underscore az underscore lsfo underscore goldfield at blm.gov. These maps and information will be placed on our e-planning website as of tomorrow. You can also go to this website in order to get the comments in order to submit online at https colon backslash backslash eplanning.blm.gov backslash eplanning dash UI backslash project backslash 2023216 backslash 510. You can also mail or hand deliver your comments to the Laura Sonoran Field Office, Attention Goldfield Recreation Area, at our address 2020 East Bell Road. Phoenix, Arizona, 85022. All comments must be received by March 10th. I'll turn it back over to Chris Wonderly. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Cindy. So we will now move into our question and answer session. To submit a question, you can click the Q&A button at the top of your screen. It looks like two speech bubbles with a question mark in it. You may enter your name and affiliation if you like. Type your question and press send and wait for a specialist to answer your question. Answers may be live or in writing. Next slide, please. Please submit your question only once. It may take a few minutes for a specialist to process the question and provide an answer. Once again, click on the Q&A icon to submit questions. Okay, our first question we have is from Andrew. It says, where can we find maps of each of the four proposals online? I cannot find a link from the BLM AJ Goldfield Rec Area Project page. Let's see, I'll turn things over to our assistant field manager, Katie Whitebull, to answer those. Good evening, and thank you for your question, Andrew. The BLM will be uploading a map of each alternative on Friday, February 24th. And that will be on our e-planning web page that was um, read to you earlier by Cindy Barrett.
Okay, our next question uh, from Andrew also. What is the plan to handle the recent rapid influx of long-term campers to the area east of Highway 88 at Nodak Road? This area has been used as an equestrian staging area for decades, but has very recently been overrun with long-term campers who are overstaying the 14-day limit, making equestrian use impossible and littering and dumping waste. Katie? So this is the plan. This is our next step. Um, whichever alternative is approved through this project decision, uh, the creation of that recreation area through this process will allow enforcement of rules and uh, potential supplemental rules as well um, that are created through this process. So we are at that next step. We are doing the process in order to be able to then enforce later. I'd like to expand a little bit on the uh, question that I'm seeing in the Q&A about the uh, people who are overstaying the 14 day camping limit. Uh, as Katie was mentioning earlier, throughout all of the alternatives besides the no action alternative, um, we have established a rec area boundary. And what this does is once we push this through the federal register notice along with, you know, signing the uh, finding of no significant impact in the decision. We now have teeth through our recreation regs that we don't currently have as far as uh, enforcement of people um, camping in the recreation area. So right now people can you know, stay the 14 days and it's an arduous process for us to be able to remove those people. Um, but once we have this uh, rec area boundary established, we can now make determinations as to what people can do in the rec area and not do in the rec area. So if we decide to choose an alternative where there's camping, we can say you can only camp over here, but not over here. We even have the option, you know, if we put together a business plan to um, potentially charge fees and have them have to make reservations for the campsites, if we decide to have campsites, 
If we decide to choose an alternative where there is no camping, um, once again, we'll have more teeth to say, this rec area is not established for camping, so you cannot camp in this rec area, and we'll be able to move out on enforceability a lot quicker than we currently have. Okay, our next question, do any of the proposed plans include charging fees? Having a comparison of the plans in chart form could be helpful. Katie? So at this time, we do not have a business plan to charge fees. However, um, we could do one in the future, depending on what option is chosen during this process. Um, we would have to have that approved through a different process, any fees that were charged. And then um, having a comparison of the plans in chart form could be helpful. And we may do that during the NEPA process in the NEPA document itself, and you would be able to see that in the draft document. Thank you, Katie.
OK, our next question. No matter which plan is chosen, will addressing invasive species such as stink net will be that a part of the management moving forward? So per the NEPA process, all resources are analyzed. So if a decision is made to make this a recreation area, yes, invasive species would be included. Thank you. Okay, our next question, are there traffic or road planning changes being considered as a part of this proposal? Yes, there are. Um, we are looking at potential road designations throughout this process and roads would be consistent with the approved uses through this process as well.
Hey, next question. Do any of the plans include uh, including a plan for constructing new hiking trails? So BLM did not consider constructing any new hiking trails in our plans. However, we're in the public scoping process. So if you provide um, substantive comments regarding the need of them, it could be included in a recreation plan. We had a question from Colleen. Can you provide a better explanation of where your proposed an equestrian staging area in relation to Nodak Road and the current overstate campers? Uh, we switch back on the slide here to alternative B, which gives you a section on the map of where this staging area is going to be located. It's going to be Highway 88 on the south side at Nodak Road and we'll go up to the McKellips area. That entire staging area, although not all of it, will be um, cleared of vegetation for trailer camping. There will be other amenities for horses that will be placed inside there with the planning, and the entire area would be constructed um, with a fence around it and would be a day use only site. And again, these maps um, of all the alternatives will be available on e-planning starting tomorrow. Thank you.
Once again, if you have questions about the project, you can click the Q&A button at the top of your screen to submit questions. Once you submit it, our specialist will process an answer for you and we'll come back. Our next question, and then we're going back to the National Environmental Policy Act process screen here. The question is, once an option has been selected and implemented, is there a time frame when a review could be completed to modify these options, add or remove? If so, what would that process be? So as we stated before on this slide, we are at the public scoping. We're in project milestone number one, basically. Um, so right now is where we are uh, formulating those alternatives with your help. You will be able to look at that again during the uh, May 2023 draft plan and draft EA. Um, normally during that time, we have another 30 day public comment period, so you can make more comments at that time. Um, but additions and subtractions would then be uh, looked at again during the read and analyze in June 2023 as well. I'm sorry, May 23 for the uh, draft plan and draft EA.
Uh, our next question we have, where will the main access points be for this area? Sandy, do you want to take that one? Sure, I can handle that. Um, to access on the north side of Highway 88, you will still be able to utilize Hackamore Road in order to access the Bulldog staging area that connects you to Forest Service. You will also be able to use Hackamore Road in order to access the OHV portion of this suggested plan. Uh, the horse staging area that's on the south side of NODAC, you would be able to cross over and access the area via a step over. Some people also end up staging at the Goldfield Ghost Town and then will ride their horses in through horse step overs and also from the far west side um, of Hackamore Road where it's already uh, a recreation public purpose lease for Apache Junction that will also have a horse step over for that horse area.
Okay, our next question. In a best case scenario, how quickly will the new recreation area actually be built? Will it be in place before the end of this calendar year? So we at the BLM hope to begin construction during this calendar year. However, we cannot yet determine a begin and end construction date until we have an approved plan. Thank you. We have a couple questions from Colleen. Uh, in what option will be will you be charging fees? And in what option would use fees typically be considered on BLM land? And do you have any examples of similar areas that have been developed? So as of right now, 
Uh, we do not have a business plan in place as stated earlier. Um, so we do not have the process in place to charge fees at this time. We would use rec.gov if camping was approved. Uh, rec.gov is a reservation site. Um, so if we were going to charge for camping, that would be, I believe, alternative, is it B or C of the alternatives current as they sit? Um, and then we have examples, our painted rock day use and campground area. We charge fees for both the day use and the campground. And uh, painted rock is located south of Phoenix near Gila Bend. We have a question from Mark that I can answer. Uh, can these slides be downloaded? Uh, and yes, we will be providing these slides on our e-planning website uh, tomorrow, along with maps uh, for the project. And a recording of this meeting is also going to be posted on our YouTube web page as well. Uh, we have another question from Colleen. Will trash removal be part of the plan or is this a pack in pack out proposal? Katie. So the BLM encourages leave no trace and pack it out, pack in, pack out for all public land users. Thank you.
Our next question, are there changes to the existing roads traffic control on 88, for example? So the Bureau of Land Management does not have jurisdiction over Highway 88. Any traffic controls that would be in place would have to be approved by Arizona's Department of Transportation. Um, BLM could uh, coordinate with them to determine what could be done depending on what select or which alternative is selected. Thank you, Katie. Our next question, with option D, there would be no campfires allowed. With option C, would campfires be allowed with rules regarding this? Right now, there are so many fires burning at night at the NODAC area with some questionable things being burned that create foul smelling smoke. So if alternative C were selected, supplemental rules could be created to tell the public where and what material is suitable for burning. Campfires for cooking, barbecue amenities may be approved for day use. All users would also be required to adhere, adhere to fire restrictions in the area. Thank you.
So as we wrap things up tonight, I'd like to thank everyone for participating and submitting questions um, and to discuss how you can submit official comments for the Goldfield plan. Uh, so you can submit official comments, requests for additional information or to be added to the mailing list via email at blm underscore az underscore lsfo underscore goldfield at blm.gov. You can also submit comments uh, on our e-planning website at https colon slash slash eplanning.blm.gov slash eplanning dash ui slash project slash 2023216 slash 510. Or you can also submit comments by mail or in person at the Lower Sonoran Field Office Attention Goldfield Recreation Area, 2020 East Bell Road, Phoenix, Arizona 85022. And a reminder that comments must be received by March 10th, 2023. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us tonight and have a good evening.